Okay, I'm Chris Levels, the host of Politics and Prophecy on FreedomizerRadio.com, Blog Talk Radio, and iTunes. And not only do you get to see my voice, but or hear my voice, I'm sorry, but you get to see the face that you hear on the uh, radio. And the reason I'm doing this right now is actually in tribute of a another one of my brothers. His name is Christopher Harris. He's in D.C., District of Columbia. And he has had the audacity and courage to take on those that represent values that are completely opposite to ours. And I'm giving him the credit he deserves. No praise, no glory that's reserved for God and Jesus Christ. But he is a man that stands strong. He is a man that is willing to put himself in the line of fire and not hesitate to fire back. So I hope you will enjoy what has taken place or my efforts to show what has taken place over the last week in this man's life as he speaks the truth, unvarnished, untarnished, and without equivocation. Enjoy as I give tribute to my brother. I humbly call my brother, Christopher Harris. For internships, you just don't go with the people who apply. You also go out and recruit at colleges. And if the if the Republican Party Don Lemon wants to have more diverse uh, right. interns but, and African Americans, see, okay, then you send me. Right. I got to call you on that. Let me finish my Rosa. point. Maybe you should have a better message, which is appealing to people of color, and then you will have more people of color who want to be a part of your particular organization. But, but here's the problem, reason? Doc. Don Lemon Fuller. Here's the problem with that. Is that it, ta it takes, first of all, it takes somebody with very thick skin to go out there and be black and say, I'm a Republican, I'm a conservative, because what's going to happen right is they're going to come on yeah, your I've network. Yeah, I've lived it for 25 what's years. What's going to happen is that if they're going to come on your network and they're going to be called everything but a child of God, they're going to be called an Uncle Tom, a coon, and uh, everything like that. What are you and talking so, first about? things first, I, are you going to sit there and act like that's not true? I, 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 I well, guess. if you act like it and someone calls you out on it, then we can't do anything about that. Maybe the messenger. So it's okay better. to actually call someone a particular name as long as you feel like they're acting like that. I, Is that I what you're say saying? That. I'm just well, saying that you can't, you can't blame message. for you can't blame people for being called certain names if they behave you're a certain way. You're a terrible message. messenger. Okay it's gonna, you're going to get that kind of scrutiny. No, you're going to get that kind of Because that's what she's saying. saying it's okay to call someone a name if you have a preconceived notion of their particular behavior. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Go ahead. Just call her Tom. Don Lemon, time for this administration to let the Hillary bashing go and concentrate on governing. I mean, especially also if he wants to wear that, I agree. Look, his business, but to an Easter egg roll, come on, bro. Don Lemon, Fuller. Go ahead. What do you think, Tara? Well, well, I just want to say this. I think it was a huge mistake for Hillary Clinton to make that comment, um, even though as tempting as it was, um, it, it was that was a huge mistake. It was and, awful, and but we're talking about the right. Plan. Right, but I'm, but I'm just saying that, and as a result of her doing that, it's given, it's it's allowed this to kind of live on, people wearing it as a badge of valor to stick it to the Hillary Clinton. I think it's a little bit ridiculous. I mean, the election's yeah. been over now for uh, 15 months, I've got to get Christopher, months, I'm so almost done. It, enough is enough with this. It's classless. Well, Christopher, it's classless. what's your response? Well, to mention that the election's been over, but yet Hillary Clinton is still out there acting like it, she's still fighting the election. <laughs> so, I mean, it, to sit there is? and get... She is. You haven't Where? seen her traveling all over the world? Like, Do you like, want to shut her up? Like, well, Hillary Clinton is entitled Donald to Trump get on the plane her and more speak her opinion. <laughs> Donald Trump is Hillary the one who keeps resurrecting her. I just want everyone to know that just because Hillary Clinton lost an election does not mean she is not able to 
speak her opinion. I'm uh, Mitt Romney is still out there. Everyone, everyone else who previously ran for president is also still so out there. What you're so basically why did saying Clinton is you don't like quiet? the message that Donald Trump Jr. or Donald Trump Sr. is that's putting out there. That's not what I'm saying. Please don't put words in my mouth. Well, I'm not putting words, but that's what you're basically saying. That's no, the, that's, that's not what I'm basically that saying. Had. I would just say it. You're, you're saying okay, that. Look, no, don't basically saying it. All right, hold on. I got to go. Let me say this. You shouldn't tell me about the problem that you think that I have. I got to go, y'all. I'm out of time. I'm over time. I am over time. I'm over time. <laughs> Poor Don Lemon. Nice guy. Don Lemon full of show's really unbelievable. Christopher Harris was on it the other night. He's the man you saw sitting there. He's the executive director of Unhyphenated America, and he joins us tonight. So I watched that that clip, and first I felt I felt so bad for you, but I also thought it was kind of an amazing moment where you basically had someone defending the use of racial slurs because they're politically expedient. Well, what happened, uh, Tucker, was that the left showed who they really are. I mean, of course, uh, Tara calls herself a conservative and a Republican, but uh, yeah, I mean, well, well, we'll let her say what she wants to say. But at the end of the day, what the left does, they try to put everybody in a box. Yeah. And we, would, with unhyphenated, unhyphenated America, what we believe is America's best when it's unhyphenated. That if you believe in, if you embrace, if you understand that uh, and embrace the principles of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, then you're an American and there's no need for any pre prefix or suffix, you're just an American. And so trying to put all these, trying to put everybody into a particular box saying that you must think a particular way because of your paint job, as one of my buddies says, uh, the melanin content in your skin is one of the problems that the left has. And what they're doing is they're focusing on identity politics. And they try to say, well, Donald Trump obviously must be a racist because, well, look at the lack of diversity without kind of doing some critical analysis and saying, well, how many black people actually applied for a, a White House internship? And even then, when you look at what exactly what happened with Ms. Setmeyer is that she just vilified any black person who doesn't toe the line. Well, exactly. So what happens, I mean, and one of the reasons for the hysteria, I think, is Trump actually got a higher percentage of the black vote than the Republican ran before him, Mitt Romney. Not a ton, but more, so that freaked him out. But what happens to the country long term if you encourage everyone in it, of all colors, to think of themselves first as members of a racial or ethnic group? Like what happens over time? Uh, balkanization. Yeah. You know, the term, a lot of people are not familiar with it, but uh, the Balkan region, uh, what you have is a lot of uh, different tribes, different groups of people who are all constantly warring against each other. And one of the things that, I mean, we are the United States of America. I mean, granted, you have people, you're maybe a Virginian or you're a South Carolinian or a Texan or whatever like that. And so you might have a certain amount of pride for being, uh, being from the state that you're from. But at the end of the day, we're all Americans. We have something unifying right. in our culture. It's once again, it's those beliefs in life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And it's one of those things that they keep trying to push these identity politics to say that you must think a particular way because of the color of your skin. But more importantly, they want you to believe that they want me to believe that because of the color of my skin that I'm, in an, I'm inherently a victim, that I will always be a victim, and that I should vote a particular way for the people who, I guess, uh, they want to protect me. But you know, we can look at the black community overall, and here's the reality. What has gotten better in the past 50 years, as long as blacks have been voting 70 plus percent for the Democratic Party? No one can say that things have gotten better from economic standpoint. The schools haven't gotten better. Uh, economically, we're not doing better. Family-wise, we're not doing better. But yet, these are the points that they keep wanting to push with these identity politic issues, and, and it's just really maddening. Do you think quickly that maybe the identity politics is designed to distract people from thinking about their actual circumstances, from asking mm. the questions you just raised, which is like, is my life better? Am I making more? Is my family better off? If they can wave the red flag of race in front of you, maybe you won't think about those things. Well, you know, Don, the reality is, I mean, I attend McLean Bible Church, yeah. which is a the huge church. church. It's a, a ethnically diverse church. I mean, I always say that the culture is Christian, but it's an ethnically diverse church. We have over 100 different cultures, excuse me, ethnicities represented at yeah, our yeah. church. And when you have people interacting one-on-one, -on -one, you know, there's no real issues of well, racism. Exactly. And church is the best, the best possible example of that. Thank you very much. That was Thank great. You, Thank you for having me. Google is expanding research efforts in China that could eventually help the Chinese military.